Big Fluff. Hello, world. It's Stephanie Smart, and I'm here to tell you. That I know some shit. Exotica. Hey everyone, I'm Joel Murphy. And I'm Stephanie Smarr. And this is Stephanie Knows Some Shit. And today, I believe you know some shit about being sick. Oh, Joel. Joel, Joel, Joel. We went down, we went down to a dark place at the... Just staring down my toilette (laughs) for two and a half, almost three weeks. So I wanted to come on today because it is so recent and I haven't eaten anything like in a really long time. I did start eating the other day again, but I hadn't eaten in so long that I was like, you know what me and my friends should talk about? Sickness and sick foods and all of the things um, so I thought it would be like kind of fun because I'm slowly introducing like at lunch today, I learned that I'm still not in a place where the texture of cherry tomatoes does not make me want to hurl. Oh, yeah. That's always the mm-hmm. least fun part of being sick is the reacclimating. The yeah. Reacclimating and trying to figure out what's going to be OK. And the yeah, cherry of, tomato was not it. Yeah. Very acidic cherry but, tomatoes, too. Yeah. It mm. got in my mouth. And I was like, mm, my sister-in-law, Amy, who I absolutely love, we were having lunch with her, was like, there were so many cherry tomatoes on the plate because I got a Cobb salad. And she was like, you don't like cherry tomatoes? And I was like, not today, Satan. <laughs> not today. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But this is an interesting because I'm curious. So I don't know. For me, like when I get sick, I tend to go to very simple. You want, I don't know. Maybe a lot of people are like this. You want the things that you had when you were a kid. So it's like saltine crackers, chicken noodle soup. That kind of, But you're a chef. So I don't know if that flies. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's, you know, if you're fancier. You know, before we even get into the food, one question that I think when anybody gets sick is like the most stressful thing. And that is when to call out sick. Oh, okay? yeah. Yeah. That is the less we write like a little like note sheet to ourselves so we don't get too off topic because I could end up talking about like Switzerland at any given point. And that's the last question. But I was like, that should be the first. Like, we should identify when to call it sick because I had to call out sick for my jobs. And I'm my only employee. But, you know. Yeah, essentially, if you're calling out sick because you you cook food for people in their homes. So yeah. you if you're sick, th- that's not happening. Like, it's not it like not there is no other person who's going to take over your shift or anything. No. You're, you're no. canceling. And I really yeah. struggled with this because I was like. Just to give everybody like a short run of it. OK, picture one month time. My sleep schedule gets kind of weird. Then I start to feel kind of nauseous. Then I'm like, I have no appetite. So I'm like, embrace. Don't eat until you feel like you can. And then the demon in my stomach made me hurl around starting at 3 p.m. And I started pulling all nighters because I couldn't sleep because I was so sick to my stomach, blah, blah, blah. GI thing mixed with a little stress, bad combo for your girl, because I know this shit now. Um, So I truly physically could not drive the hour to Boston to cook for people. But when I was in the restaurant industry, it was like a badge of honor. And I know that like so much has changed after the pandemic and COVID, but you were sick. Well, you better be sick on that line to having the best service of your night, of your night, of your life. Um, but here we are kind of now, two years after the pandemic, though it's still whatever. Two years into the pandemic. <laughs> into the pandemic. Yeah. We're in it. Um, and now we do all know sort of that beauty of working from home, the efficiency, blah, blah, blah. So my advice to everybody, and I would say this to anyone who worked for me is you have a fever, something gastro up or down, doesn't matter to me is going on. You feel lightheaded. That's the worst out of all of them. Cause like a fainting friend slash employee is so scary. 
um, it's better to call out sick. And here is the real thing that I struggle with the most, Joel, is that I wait until the very last second to call out sick. So two hours before I'm supposed to leave the house to go to my client's house. And what I keep learning and I'm trying to change my own habits is don't do that. You were sick the night before. Right. That's actually more respectful to your employers than it is to like push through in all honesty. Um, And that's better. Like, I don't know when you should call out sick. Everybody's threshold for illness is different. But the more time you can give, the better. And if you do see a doctor, and I still do this, my clients would never ask for a doctor's note, ever. I do get a doctor's note and just attach it to the email that's saying like, oh, sorry, booting and rallying over here, can't come to work. Um, And I attach it because I do it from a place where I'm like, it makes me feel better. And I think this is part of like my paranoid anxiety (laughs) coming out, but I'd rather have more proof that I'm trying to get better than less, you know? And if you don't go to the doctors, like F what I just said, you don't need it. I'm just saying that's what I do. When it's, I think you did tap into something because I think it's a very American thing that we have this like grind culture of you power through you know, you got to work, you got to keep doing it. And I, I do think that the COVID stuff has maybe readjusted the way people are thinking a little bit. But I think it's, it's that thing, too, of you're sort of talking about it. What ends up happening is you you start to feel sick, but you think you're supposed to power through. And what could have been a I got to take a day, I got to take two days balloons up into something worse because you're pushing through. So your body isn't healing. So it ends up yeah. being worse because we think that we all have to keep going and like fighting. And through. you're also putting so much on your mind mm-hmm. that's unnecessary. Yeah. So if you know the night before that you are not going to wake up and feel better. And we all know that feeling. And to all my clients, I'm so sorry that I didn't do this. Um, they listen. Yeah. But don't. Give them more time, especially since I'm a chef and I'm cooking their meals. You know, they need to have a backup plan just because I said two hours before I wasn't coming in. They still have full time work, two children. Yeah. And need to, it's not like they just can't eat. You know what I mean? Yeah, they so, gotta have a dinner. Like if your boss doesn't understand that you're not doing well and that you're very sick, you're not in a good place to go to work and whatever, and they fight back with you, reevaluate your job. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like. It's really important to take care of yourself because you are, you're it, you know? So when I told everybody I wasn't able to work the day of, I had stressed myself out and pushed through so much that I was out for the past two and a half weeks. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, yeah, I totally agree. If you don't feel well, take off. Yeah. Hopefully your boss isn't a jerk about it. it Isn't under understanding and it is it does hurt your wallet but if you end up in the er trust me that is going to hurt a lot worse than a day's wages lost right i ended up in the er yeah yeah and that's no good yeah we we don't want that obviously yeah it's just Mm -hmm. i I think that's it's an important thing in the same way that like i you know it's interesting i didn't expect this with this podcast but i do think we're, we're hitting on some important things we had a previous episode where we talked about like not everything you do has to be a job like it's but there's this like yeah. mindset. There's also that like if you're sick, you're allowed to take a sick day. You know, there's you know, there's it's certain super things. It's hard. Yeah, it's so hard. And I don't want to be like. And then one day I woke up and was confident in my decisions to be like, oh, I can't work today. That's not how it went. I'm just realizing as I get older what it takes to maintain health. You know, there's there's really a lot to it. I think it's a huge package. And I'm just trying to kind of explain the lessons that I'm learning on the way. Yeah. Like my journey is it doesn't seem to be so different from anybody. It seems to be to me, at least like I know other people can relate to it. I'm just giving you tidbits that are helping me. And if if you find that something resonates like that's that's all I really want. That's the coolest. Yeah. Yeah. You got to. Yeah. Everybody needs to rest. Everybody just take, you know, just calm down. We all we're all doing too much. We're all burnt out. Everybody take some time. Yeah. 
the best way to avoid wrinkles is a great moisturizing um, routine morning and night at a young age. If you skip that, start today. And to really hone in on what it takes to make you a human. Yep. And the best one you want to be. So here's the thing. I'm going to say this. I'm going to go this far. If you're thinking, should I call out? You should probably call out. Like that's at that point. Absolutely call yeah. Out. Yeah. Just do it. You should and, absolutely call out. And especially if your boss is terrible, then definitely call out. Is, you know, yeah. yeah. And remember that your boss was at one point the employee and mm-hmm. be like, what? How would he or she or they have reacted to this? Yeah, exactly. You know? So, so yeah, call We've out. We've all done it. Yep. Take We've a sick day. It. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll write you a doctor's note. We're not doctors and it won't help you. No. But, but you hit me it up. We will not. But we will give you our. I'll write a note. We'll get it notarized, Joel. Yeah. It'll I'll... take a couple of days because Joel has to send it from LA to Maine and then we have to send it to wherever you are. Yeah. But you could use it. It could be like a pass. You know what I mean? We won't date it. Yeah. Oh, notaries date it. Oh, white out. We'll figure it out, guys. Don't worry. We, so what Don't we need, worry. we need a notary that's in on it. So if you're a notary, hit us up and we, we really got something right? going here. Yes. How does someone become oh a notary? That seems so mysterious. I don't, I don't understand what, what you have to do. You have Random to, people are notaries too. I know, but like... What, I didn't know what a notary was until David and I were actually told that we were poor and that his brother had to co-sign like two or three apartments when eight or nine years ago and whatnot. And David was like, I need a notary. And I was like, uh. <laughs> no, I remember when Molly and I got married, you have to get a notary for the yep. marriage license. And like, it's like, okay, sure. And then you realize like, how do I find a notary? <laughs> like what? You know. Literally the yellow pages if they still exist. Yeah. The Just internet. go to the notary section. Yeah. All right. Or use the internet. <laughs> but yeah. So that's, that's our little spiel about when to call out sick. You know, you are your own gift. You do need to show yourself respect and care. And if you need to rest, the people around you that support you in your work life will support that. Um, and for my restaurant people, when you call out sick, literally, I know how hard it is. And I probably don't, I don't even know off the top of my head. I only got sent home. I never called out. Um But this is a different day and age than when I was cooking in restaurants. Give your chef as much notice as possible. They are going to bite back. And I'm not I'm not blind to that. They will bite back and say this, that and the other thing. Um, But if you can't do it, don't, because there are other chefs out there that will respect the fact that you have whatever you have and know that. Food cannot be made well when you're sick. Right. It truly can. Yeah. As people going to restaurants, like, you know, those people don't want people in the kitchen yeah. who aren't feeling well, like making their food, you know? No, that's like my mom's worst nightmare. And I don't even, you know, when you feel sick, you're like, well, I can't be that contagious. You know, you're, you're just, at least me personally. And I hope this doesn't sound too bad, but like, I didn't ever think that I was contagious and getting like, Oh, my God, I'm going to hell. I'm just (laughs) saying this stuff out loud. I do not work in restaurants anymore. Bless. Um, But but yeah, just it's not good juju. So take care of yourself. Take care of your mind and body, because even if you just have what I had, it took a toll on both. You know, so Joel and I will find you something and we will sign it and give you your pass. And. It'll be great. So going back to this whole starting of this GI thing that I got, I still don't know what it is. I've got like some more tests to be done. Um, (laughs) It's funny because I am definitely a texture person. um, Very much texture oriented. And so this was my stomach. Um, And so when I lost my appetite, the only thing that sounded good for like, Four or five days, I ate one square of a Whole Foods Rice Krispie treat. And that was it. That was <laughs> all I could get down. <laughs> and that was that was like the golden thing. It took me a really long time. Like I shared a little bit with Mr. Bear. I would like put it down and then come back to it. That was my jam, though. I was like, you ate this Rice Krispie treat. It has 
something and I don't even know nothing but something is in your stomach like you've done an okay job yeah and then as once the puking part started there was there was no food anymore and I have to say that that was the wrong decision because I would have gotten better so much faster if I had forced myself to eat something um but yeah I ate rice krispie treats for over the course and somehow joel i am not traumatized by them and they came back up oh wow that's good powered through that's good that is that's always the tough part because i have this i can't drink ginger ale unless i'm sick because in my mind ginger ale is what you have when you're sick and so i don't i don't want it when i'm i kind of feel that way about jello too i don't go near jello yeah but it's like there's certain foods that i associate with being sick as a child and i don't want them you know yeah, no, you know, but I've got um, a lot of friends who are doctors and they're always like, stick to the bland foods, the rice, yeah, the toast, mm-hmm. bananas, and bananas. I hate banana. I love banana flavor. I do not love just like chomping into a banana. Um, they're really good because they do potassium. They they do a lot for you. Yeah. No, bananas are a good one for sure. Yeah. So give that a try. And if you can make a really mild smoothie. Yeah. Because I started drinking boost <laughs> <laughs> shakes just because I was like, this is I just started. David told me I look like bird bones with paper mache wrapped around my skin. <laughs> like it was just really, really rough. And that was the only way I could get calories in. So. That's sort of my advice, like whatever you can do, just really, really try, because I was like I was becoming irrational. Yeah. Well, yeah, because your your body's already worn down and then you're now you're not eating. So, yeah, you're you're not in a good place at that point, but still watching cooking shows. So I was like, fuck, I'm just so hungry right now and like not eating. And then it just spiraled into a whole thing. I'm the same way, too. I can definitely watch cooking shows, even if I don't feel well, like 100 <laughs> percent. Like there's just something about cooking shows that it's like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Like I'll eat them. I'll watch them and eat. I'll watch them when I'm not hungry. Like they're just they're very soothing. That's my jam. Shows. Yeah. Little side note. You know what? I started watching Julia on HBO Max. Oh, I wanted to watch that. Is that good? So it starts out a little rocky. You're okay. like, I don't know if I like her voice. I don't know. This isn't the Julia that I necessarily imagined. And I'm on episode three and it is so charming and funny. Julia was like a hornball. I'm not <laughs> going to get into it, but like, I think that I don't know. There's something so matronly about her. And then she's just like hitting on Paul from every angle. And I was like, whoa. I mean, if someone from HBO is listening, I feel like that should be the pull quote on the poster. Like, there Ste- you go. Stephanie Smar says Julia was a hornball. Like, that's already a, piqued my interest. It is a good show. And that kind of leads me to something else. So, again, you guys all know me. Little, little nuts, little specific. Um, I have to be very careful about what I watch, read and listen to when I'm sick, because the association I have ruined. Dawson's Creek when I was sick, I ruined I Love Lucy, my favorite show in the entire world, like my favorite show. That was my that was like when I was sick as a kid and I would stay home. I Love Lucy would come on during the day and I used to to watch it. Yeah. The jam, but I watched it over the course of a different sickness years ago. And now, like, I still have an association. So I'm careful. So I did mostly reading while I was sick and sleeping. Yeah. I was sleeping. Reading, you reading sleep. and sleeping. Yeah, sleep. Yeah. That's how I ended up with. We'll get into it later. But um, those are kind of my things like plain spaghetti. Yeah, I love a, so good. I love a buttered noodle when I don't feel a well. Buttered noodles, the shit. Yeah, it's with the s- little salt. Yeah, exactly. But like a yeah. good amount of butter. You know yeah. what I mean? Don't be a weenie. No, Catch I'm yourself. I'm throwing like a quarter stick of butter. <laughs> like I'm absolutely. I'm throwing, yeah. I think that's just my yeah. base for yeah. butter is my fat of choice. Yeah, out of any oil, out of any other sort of fat to use, butter. Oh, 
Yeah, because so I, good. Yeah, if I'm not feeling well, just like buttered bread, it's really good too. Like yes. Yeah. We call those fatty sandwiches. Yeah. Because I like white bread with like a thick piece of butter, but it's not one piece of butter. I do it to cover the whole thing as you would with like a cheese slice mm-hmm. and then cut it and close it. And I'll nibble on that. I used to work at a place and it was such a fun job called Maddie's Sale Off in Marblehead. And it was a bar, 100% a bar. At the time, the food there is very good now. At the time, it was sort of like New England pub fare. Um, but we offered cornbread. And I would take a fresh slice of cornbread, allow the steam to come out, and put a whole gold foil packet of butter in it. So the bread was perfect the size for the butter. And this was just like, oh, oh, this is my jam. It was so good. That sounds good. So good. I also yeah. love that job. Hi to all my Maddie's friends. <laughs> um, all my Marblehead peeps. In a world where people watch movies. I think I'm going to watch a movie. Sometimes they don't like what they see. I don't like this movie. But sometimes they look for the silver lining. Wait a second. I like this part of this movie. Joel and Andy do that work for you. The Silver Linings Playback. I like this part of this podcast where they tell me the part of the movie I like. Every Monday on the Peak Sloth Podcast Network or wherever you get your podcasts. What I would love to hear, and this is another question, and please like take it seriously when I say I really want to know this. Is there a special meal that you eat when you're sick? It can be nostalgic like my mom made it, or it could just be like, this is what I found works for me. Um, I would be so interested in hearing that because I think especially through different cultures, I think it's so interesting to like hear what people eat when they're not feeling well. I just think that's so cool. Like, is it rice and butter? Is it poached chicken breast? Is it, you know, whatever it is, is it Triscuits with melted cheese, which is also very good. Anything like that? Like what, what do you do? What do you eat? Yeah, I'm curious, like you said, culturally, because I, I, I'm, I'm guessing it's probably a lot of broths, you know, I, I would imagine maybe yes. that's a common. But yeah, if there's what are the you know, what are the other cultural equivalents of chicken soup or, you know, like that? Yes, that, come that up? is such a good question. Yeah. My doctor actually said, I don't even know if she's a doctor, but whatever she is like she, she's in a doctor's office. The lady that I see at the doctor's office. She she's in a van parked in front of a hospital that you <laughs> climb into the back of. <laughs> it's so cheap. Um, she was like, "There's a reason why chicken soup is good for you." She was like, "Because it's very mild on the stomach and blah blah blah." And I was like, "All right, cool." I don't even know her name now that I'm thinking. I was about to give her a shout out. I couldn't tell you. This is sounding shadier and shadier the longer you talk. She's really a part of a doctor's office, I swear. I want to believe you. My mom took me to the doctor's. I can't even. I turn into a five-year-old when I get sick. My mother and father drove up to Maine because I could not force David to take me to the doctor's again. But I couldn't drive myself. And so I called my mom and dad. I called my mom specifically. And I was like, can you take me to the doctor's tomorrow? And she was like, honey, I am there with bells and whistles. (laughs) She like she was so excited. She so they came to the house. I forgot to tell David that my parents were coming. So oh, no. David comes running up the stairs and he goes, "Um, your parents are downstairs the next morning." And I was like, "Oh my god!" Totally forgot to tell him. <laughs> my parents, their dog, my dog that hates dogs. There was like World War Seven going on, and yeah, I made my mother come into the room with me because i was hearing and seeing double and i was like this lady's gonna say something to me and i'm not going to know oh wow what to do with any of this oh guys it was dark it was a dark period in my last week but it was dark so um she does exist because my mom's been there okay there's because there's also the possibility you weren't feeling well so there's like a fever dream you imagined the doctor scenario but it's not, if your mom is verifying it i'll, I'll accept it. she will mother i know you're listening <laughs> um 
she was there. Also, your mom's the best. I don't know your mom super well, but like your mom's the best. She she's been she's very such kind. An angel. Yeah. Also, happy she's birthday, such an angel. Didn't she just have a yes, birthday? Happy belated birthday, Mama. Yeah. Um, she always she. We were just on the phone before Joel and I started recording, and she was like, "He just seems so smart and kind and funny and blah blah blah." And I was like, "Yes, he is, Mama. He is." absolutely all of those things but she's she's your hype woman so also if you ever need like a dose of mom my mom's very good at it and she it was so relaxing and relieving to have them take me to the doctor's office like just imagine we're in their nissan my dad's driving my mom's yelling at my dad for driving and benny the dog and i are in the back seat and i felt (laughs) like my face on the window because i'm hot but i can't roll down the window and i was like Okay. And it was just, it was nice. I think that's one of the things about being sick is I got so sick. I allowed myself to get so sick that that's where we were. So, and again, I'm just saying this because I learned this lesson every time, like take care of yourself before that happens. Really just take care of yourself because if you don't have your health, you don't have very much because you're really incapacitated. Yeah. Yeah, no, it is so important. And it's like I said, we we have this like push through it mentality and it's not good. It's, it's not, not good, good for anyone in the long run. It's it's not. This, by the way, this reminded me, I, I was just thinking about it. One of the sickest times, like the sickest that I've ever been mm. was when I graduated high school. I had Ooh. been like super sick, but it was I had family, you know, my grandparents were there, like my my whole family was there to, and they wanted to oh, watch you me. mean the actual graduation the ceremony like the no. the walker and so i felt so miserable and there's a photo of me that's great i wish if i can find it i'll post it to instagram i don't know what happened Absolutely. to it but it's it's the sea of everyone in their caps and gowns listening to the speaker and my head is in my hands i'm like doubled oh, over baby. and the the worst part of this was so i made it across the stage which i wasn't sure i was going to be able what? to like walk across the stage and get my diploma i thought i might collapse that's how bad i was mm-hmm. feeling but this is what my family did to me when we were done i was just like my whole thing was making it i gotta make it through the ceremony for my family yep. so they can see me graduate and then my mom very sweetly was like okay i'll take you home The rest of my family went to my graduation dinner without me. They were like, okay, we're all going to go out to dinner. And I went home and slept. The smart family 100% would have gone without me. Yep. 100%. I haven't haven't forgotten all these years later that they had my graduation dinner without me. No, hold on to that angst. (laughs) Hold on to that. Um, The sickest I've ever been, other than my reaction to the second COVID shot, um, and that only lasted, I just, you know, we all got that. Um... I got mono. Ooh, I had mono. The day before Thanksgiving break. And I spent all of Thanksgiving break like, oh, it was gross, like spitting into a cup because I felt so sick and couldn't swallow anything. And then the day I went back to the high school and I went to boarding school, I was like, I think I feel better. I was fine. I spent the whole Thanksgiving break being like, this is pretty bad. And then being like, Meh, not that bad. Totally can handle it. Yeah, I man, mono. That was one of the sickest that I've ever been. Where that's like, I could, remember, like my throat was swollen shut. I couldn't eat anything. I lost a bunch yeah, of weight. My mom when was I like, my-, my mom was like, "Who are you kissing?" And I was like, "The list is too long, mom. Please don't <laughs> ask me questions that you don't want the answer to. <laughs> you sent me to boarding school. What did you expect?" <laughs> uh, yeah, I bizarrely too. When I had mono, I was in a play, and I still did it. And that was another situation where I have no memory of doing it, where I just like some thing. No, it was a dr- dramatic. It was a murder mystery play. And I was the detective like who solved it. I'm so, so I'm yeah. so out of the theater that I assume every play has song. Yeah. Well, it was we, we did it. You do a spring musical and a fall like dramatic play. play. But uh, but no, that. this was like my friend. It was in college and my friend was directing it and had asked me to be in it as like the detective. And so I was like, well, I have to do it. And then yeah. I was like, I had missed the week of rehearsals leading up to it. And that was a situation where I literally was asleep in my parents' car before we left the parking lot because I just did it and then collapsed. I don't know how I you talked. You and I are the yeah. same person. Yeah. Yeah. Truly. That's, that's incredible. You know, that's one of those things. So when it comes to 
foods, let's say you you do have a sore throat. Let's say it's not stomach related. Like jasmine rice with butter and a little touch of soy sauce. Ooh, is that sounds so good. good. That sounds really it's good. It's good every day. Honestly, there's actually, side note, David and I are obsessed. You can make it yourself, but uh, with tempura dipping sauce, it's got dashi and soy and everything in it. It's like kinkoman or mm-hmm. whatever. <gasps> it makes everything so good. Don't overuse it. It's gross when you overuse it, but oh my God. But that's got that saltiness too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Super umami. Yeah. Like so perfect. I also love grilled cheeses when I'm sick. Simple, nice, easy on the tummy. Everything, you always revert back to being a child. Yeah. 100%. Even when you are a child, you're like, how much younger can I get? Can you puree this grilled cheese sandwich for me? That would be perfect. <laughs> yeah. Popsicles. Those are usually good. Popsicles. Yeah. Yes. I love a popsicle. Um, all of those foods are sort of like, my jam and like just because i'm sick now and just dwelling on it obsessing on it i don't get sick very often so when i do it is just whew, yeah not pleasant to be around joel was texting me and i was like so brutally honest he was like how are you feeling and i was like fuck this <laughs> bah! you know yeah i was I, I got a little concerned like because i hadn't heard from you in a few days and i was yeah i was a little and that's worried not normal yeah so I was in a dark place, everybody, but we're yeah. out. We're out. And we're appreciating life again. I hear a bird chirping and I'm like, Whew, <laughs> gift. That is the sign when you when you can start noticing <laughs> the surroundings and you're hearing Every, nature. Anything. Yeah. When I could like. When I re loaded my humidifiers, because I don't know if anybody looks at my Instagram, but. I sleep with two humidifiers very close to my face because I I'm somehow convinced it's like incredibly good for me. I couldn't refill them for a few days and David would never notice this. And when I actually went and refilled it, I was like, we're on the up. We are doing better. We are going to make it (laughs) and whatever. Um, The other thing that's so important just in life. And I didn't realize this. So this is well, this is embarrassing, but. I read this quote from J-Lo or J-Lo's personal trainer or whatever. And this was when I started my own personal weight loss journey because I was relatively unhealthy in that sense. And she said she was like, I drink. You know, however much she said, a gallon of water, I don't don't come at me because that's too much. I don't know how much it was, but we're going to go with a gallon for peace. She said, I drink a gallon of water. It's good for my skin. It's good for flushing out the toxins. It's good for X, Y, and Z. So I started drinking water. And that's so important. Gatorade, Pedialyte. Yep. God's gift to this earth is Pedialyte. Yes. Like, if you get yourself dehydrated, just shut it down. Like, that's so much, so much worse. My new guilty pleasure, and this is gross, is... <laughs> I drank so much water over the course of feeling ill and so much came back up that like water suddenly had a taste, a very specific taste. So I was like, I need to find a way to make water palatable. So I I found these sugar free Skittle flavored powder things you pour into your water. I'm drinking it right now. That's what's in here. This is a strawberry. Like they're actually from Skittles? It's Skittle brand. Skittle brand. Skittle brand, Skittle so brand grape, water. There's green apple, there's strawberry, and there's orange. I d- I'm not okay. judging you, but I don't think you part of J Lo's uh, health. She's not drinking Skittle. Yeah, I don't water. think she's drinking Skittle water. <laughs> she's not Skittle water, but I, could, I am. I could. Um, see, ben Affleck might be drinking Skittle water. I could see that. That is true. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> love you, Ben. I, no, um, I love Ben so much. Like, water. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. Skittle water, um, powder Gatorade, because we have a weird refrigerator and you can't put like a whole lot in it. It just like it's not conducive for anything, but it was it came with the house. I was about to say it was free. It was not free. It came with the house <laughs> and until it breaks, I'm not going to replace it. So I love a powdered. We used to do a lot of crystal light, but then both David and I drank way too much crystal light and we are off that. Yeah, Molly and I say flavor you could name. 
Yeah, Molly and I are the same where it's like I'll buy those for a while and then I get very burnt out on them and then it's very like, no burnt one. out. Yeah. You're just like, oh, this doesn't sound good. But it's so important. Everybody says it, but I have to say, I've tried to lose weight, and this is a side note. Um very, very many, several thousand times. Just as anybody who struggles with their weight does. And I never incorporated water. I never made that something a priority. I never had a reusable bottle that I would drink from. And when I started doing that, when I say from the bottom of my heart that weight started to come off in a way that was not punishing myself, it was incredible. And it was because that's what my body needed. So even though you're like, well, I'm drinking all this weight in water, it's like, it'll trust me. That is that is the secret you've all been asking me on Instagram. Like, how did you lose 60 pounds? Determination and hard work and exercise. And, but water is the thing that I did most clearly black and white that had the effect. Like, that's the thing. So super important to drink water in any situation. But if you're trying to get healthy or you're trying to lose weight, which None of you need to unless your doctor tells you and then even even look at that with a cross eye. But, you know, that's the thing that really made a huge difference. And yeah. I drink so much water now because you, you start drinking water. And you're like, ugh, I don't even it just fills me up. And then so, something happens. I don't know. I even have a nutrition certificate and I'm like, I don't know how it happens. But <laughs> you, you do start to have a much higher tolerance yeah drink water dieting tips by steph skittle water that's your skittle your, water that's your number skittle one diet water tip. is aggressive and i know that i'm gonna have to stop <laughs> drinking it like in the capacity that i am now because aspartame also to be clear just so this because it seems like I, i'm being harsh I would 100% drink this. So just, just so we're on the same page, I, if I find it. I'm, when I come out to LA, I'm bringing it, you a couple packs. Okay, I'll, I'll try the Skittle water for sure. You're going to be like, no wonder. Yeah, yeah. It's I had to change up the flavors. I also am a big proponent of lemon water, but just because of what I was dealing with, lemon water was not good. And then you hear about spa water and people are like, oh, with cucumbers, I love it at a spa, but do you know how much of a pain in the ass it is to like get cucumber seeds off of your cup and then like let's say you only drink half and it gets kind of gross and weird and then it's just it's like no nope 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 can't do it so do whatever you can but know that in my non-professional opinion water is the key yeah to everything yep yeah to everything um it's helped me achieve things that i really thought were completely out of my grasp so yeah no, that's I feel cool. like that's gonna be the thing people are like that's what we took away from this drink water if you get nothing drink the water. two things there's two things to remember from this episode call out sick if you don't feel well and drink water those are mm -hmm. i think those are gonna steal you the best out of everything that we've said absolutely absolutely i i really do just swear by it just swear by it do you, uh, are you a home remedy person? Is there anything that you try to do? Um, I spent a lot of my illness trying not to annoy everybody by feeling bad because I become a little emosh, mm -hmm. a little, a little sad. Um, Aww. really it was all about getting anything into my stomach that I could keeping myself hydrated because You'll be, you will be amazed. Like I showed Joel, bless his soul. It was like borderline TMI. I was like, look at my stomach. Because I didn't eat for two and a half weeks, really. The doctor said I was malnourished and my skin just like stopped producing skin. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is like another like way to take it as far as you possibly could. We're getting very close yeah. doing this podcast. You, are. I, yeah. I, you didn't ask about my stomach tattoos, which I was like, <laughs> You yeah. might. <laughs> it sounded uh, like a good idea at the time. <laughs> uh, I won't. I won't ask you on the show to talk about your mm. stomach tattoo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's sort of my home remedy. I just, you know, everybody. I think that, especially now, we're so conscious of mental and physical health. 
like really honor your body, really know your limits in certain situations, know what you need. People are good. People are intrinsically helpers. You know what I mean? Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to tell your employers, I can't do this or I can work from home for a short amount of time, but I can get to a meeting or I can get this done. You know, we're all professionals at making it work and we need to give ourselves more credit for that or you need to give yourself more credit for that. But you you do you have to honor your body you have to say i don't feel well this isn't something like that's gonna go away until i really take care of it and take care of yourself because i'm just i'm in the process of learning how to do it myself it's really important yeah and we want you to be well we everyone listening to this you're awesome and rest you're our friends and, and you're our friends and we want you to be the best version of you possible so take a nap read a book take it easy Yeah. And if you need book recommendations, I've read just about every genre, every genre. Yeah. I know you were telling me a little bit like wasn't there you were reading the James Beard book like I was reading a biography on James Beard that didn't make me love him. Oh, Um, I was reading a book that was like kind of like softcore porn, which I didn't realize when I started reading it. But then I couldn't finish it until the very end. Um, And that was interesting when you don't feel well to read something of that capacity, but it was very good. And thank you to my client who recommended it. I feel like she and I are on a deeper level now because we read the same thing. Um, People are going to ask, do you want to share the names of either of those books? Because you know we're going to get comments. The softcore porn was a book called Rush. Okay. And it was, to be honest, it was captivating. I was like, I think I learned things. I was like, oh, man. (laughs) The James Beard one, I don't know. It's like the longest one you can find. It's yeah. a long book. It's well, not- also, I mean, if you enjoyed Rush Well Sick, that, that's its own endorsement. Yeah, I, I really did. Guys, yeah. I wasn't sleeping. So I was like, <laughs> it's four o'clock in the morning and I was just digging into the juicy bits. I was like, whoa. <laughs> and if anybody knows me, you know, I'm like typically covered up with a turtleneck. Like I'm not prudish, but like I'm bashful. You know what I mean? I'm not like overly sexualized. But this book, I was like, oh, getting hot in here. I, get, I think I you're giving a, a lot of these are a lot of pull quotes for like book jackets and, and television show posters yeah. that you've given this. If week, I like so. your book. Yeah, <laughs> I'm on it. Um, I read a few thrillers. The the apartment, the Paris apartment was very good. I really, really liked it. It was a thriller. No blood, no gore, but like kept you on your toes. Um, and then always my MFK Fisher, The Art of Eating Anthology starting it for the seventh time. Um, that's just my, that's my love letter to food and the most beautiful book in the entire world. And I'm obsessed with her. And those were the chunks of books that I can remember. My Kindle's behind me and I don't want to get up because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. awkward because you guys can't see that I'm doing things, but definitely have a ton of book recommendations no show recommendations other than julia give it a try you're not going to like it at first give it a little longer and you will it finds its groove so charming and also like there were at points watching it and i hadn't smiled for days and i was like felt good Oh, nice. Felt good watching it. So really good show. And that's what I always look for in TV. Well, that's all it was. I have fond memories of watching Julia Child's show uh, when I was young. So, so that, yeah. yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, really. They really did a, a good job talking like they need my compliments, but a really, <laughs> really good job. Mine was Martin Yan. Yan can cook. Oh, nice. That was my cooking show growing up. That was no, it was Julia Child, and then who was the guy that had the like really thick uh, accent, like the uh, guarantee, like he had like one of those like Cajun accents. Oh my gosh! Do you know who I'm talking about? Yep. What was that guy? I can't remember that guy's name, but that was the other one that I saw. He was a Cajun. He was the Cajun. That was like his thing. Was the Cajun he, chef? He was the Cajun chef. Yeah. Cajun. I'm sure everyone listening is screaming it right now. Justin, was it Justin Wilson? Is that it? Is that, I, the, 1914 to 2001. Do you have a, like, 
Um, I guess it was like, yeah, it was whatever. Because it was on like uh, PBS. Gar on T. Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Yeah, that okay. That was him. Yeah. Justin, that is not a name that I, strikes me as 1914. Oh my God, it's his birthday today. That's so weird. I don't know how we that's did That's so we, weird. Yeah, he... He summoned himself to my brain. That was somewhere buried in my brain. And then we were talking oh, about I it. And I remember that. It. But no, I remember that show. Like, I have fond memories of that show as well. Yeah. Like, it was the accent yeah. for sure. But yeah, Justin just didn't food. sound right for some reason. Justin but, doesn't sound right for 1914. Yeah. But the Cajun chef for sure. So that that was the other one. Yep. That's him. All right. Happy birthday to Justin Wilson. Happy birthday. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I think I think we did some good work. Drink water. Call out sick if you don't feel well. Uh, hit us up if you need a doctor's note. and Or if you're a notary. I think those are all the things we covered. Yeah, if you're a notary, just hit us up so you can explain to us like the process and what you do. That could be... It won't be an episode, but it will be you, Joel, and I on a Zoom call as we listen to this, this like with very excited ears. I would be riveted because one of the other things that I did... Like, this is not cooking related, but when I was a kid... Man, when Mr. Rogers would go somewhere, like he'd go to a, a crayon factory or, or wherever, if he had Enthralled. gone to the notary and taught us, I would have been very excited. Enthralled. Yeah. So Enthralled. I, I think you and I both have that of like, I will listen to everything a notary has to say about being a notary mm-hmm. for sure. I'm here for you. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. This was fun. And I'm, I think I speak for everyone when I say that we are so glad that you are feeling better. Because we were all concerned. So thank you, everybody. Also, happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> it's very close. It's not my birthday quite yet, but it's very By very the time close. people hear this, it is your birthday. Yes. So I will be 37 plus days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 37 in two days or something, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So. Sick. So and you're feeling <laughs> but good. Healthy. Sick yeah. like the word, not sick like the. Yeah. 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 And you're feeling word. better. So all right. Feeling so much better. All right. Well, thanks. Thank you, everybody. So, Stephanie, recently. Hi, Joel. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, recently, we've, uh, we've been asking people, uh, to, if they like the show, to give us a five-star review and to share a meal that they've had with us. And people have been doing that. And I was going to share one with you here at the end of the show. I'm so excited. We want to make sure that we're giving everybody a shout out because we are so grateful for your reviews. Um, I think they do stuff with like the queue of Apple podcasts. I don't even know. But from a personal place that I think I can speak for Joel, too. It just makes us really happy that we're being received well. So I don't know if you can smell smell the smile on my face. (laughs) See the smile on my face. You can't. But I just want you all to know that this is something that Joel and I are absolutely loving doing together. And just having your positivity radiate through these reviews means the world to us. Yeah, it really does. Like it's delightful to get feedback. Uh, you can't see or smell our minty smiles, but uh, mm. they, they, they're plastered on our faces, but they're plastered on our faces. Uh, so this one, I'm going to try These are all letters. So it's M H B K S, which I don't know if that's M books. I assume it stands for something, but we're going to go with M books. Okay. Uh, Uh And they, they said, I'm making this tonight. Sheet pan, chicken thighs with onions and shallots, potatoes with lemons and capers. Doesn't get any easier. 20 minutes of prep, 50 minutes or so of cooking. Doesn't get any easier. That sounds amazing. I know that it trust me, it does get easier because like I have an air fryer and I'll throw in some like frozen <laughs> stuff into that. And that is the easiest that you can do. So what you did is like proper That's cooking. Cooking. Yeah. So that is bravo cooking. for that. And that you sounds, are yeah. Welcome to my house anytime to make me that. There was not an ingredient listed that I don't like. Yeah, it sounds very good. So that's Props. Yeah. Props. Yeah. Good job. Mm, books. Mm, books. We're very proud of you for cooking. And it sounds like you've got like your cook and apron tied securely. Yeah. So, so keep on it. And if you would like a meal that you've had recently uh, to be evaluated by us on a future episode, uh, give us a five star review and uh, leave a leave a review, you know, leave a comment saying what you've had and we'll let you know what we think. So if you're confused. We probably are too, but together we can figure it out. 
Stephanie Knows Some Shit is hosted by Stephanie Smarr and me, Joel Murphy, and produced by me. If you enjoyed the show, give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts, and instead of a review, tell us about a meal that you ate or made recently. We'd love to read about it. <laughs>